Well, currently, technology is in what we call the information age. And that is the age of information management, and we're moving into big data. And I think that where technology is going next with respect to the business world is the experience and engagement age. I think that to be globally competitive in this dynamic world that we're currently in, every company needs two key competencies, human capital and technology capital. Human capital, or what I call relationship capital, is with employees and customers. Technology capital is much more than hardware, it's platform, software, the entire use of technology to enable innovation and growth. Now, why is this so important? Technology has primarily been used in medium and big size companies to drive efficiency, cost controls. Technology has been a back of the house operation. I think technology is going to move to the front of the house and putting it another way, I think technology is the house, all right? And by that I mean, yes, technology will still drive efficiencies and productivities, but technology will be used to drive top line growth and innovation. We know, for example, that technology is good at cost controls, efficiency, productivity, but in order for technology to drive growth and innovation, technology has got to move into marketing, it's got to move into customer co-creation and innovation, and it's got to move in employee engagement and employee relationships into the human resource area. And lastly, in this dynamic competitive world, technology is going to move into strategy and strategy and how you make strategy. Globally competitive companies of the future have to have those two capabilities throughout their organization, relationship capabilities and technology capabilities. Innovation is the buzzword in the business world today. Every organization wants to be innovative. Very few organizations are innovative. Why? All organizations are inherently anti-innovative. What's the purpose of any organization? To produce reliable, predictable, standardized results with low variance, 99% defect free. Well, innovation it's not standardized, it's not reliable, and innovation is 90% failure. So organizations drive for efficiency. Our business models around the world and big global companies is based on the theory of scale and efficiency. That model and the culture and the processes that those companies have of stamping out variants. Managers in those companies get up every day and look at their technology-based data, their information management system, and what do they focus on? Variants. Eliminate variants. Now, operational excellence is important, but it's very different than innovation. If you're going to be an innovative company, you've got to have a different mindset, a different culture, different processes, and different behaviors. So the quandrum, all right, or the conundrum is, how do you be a good innovative company and a good operational excellence company? Most people haven't figured this out and they go for operational excellence. They go for scale and they end up buying their innovation. Underlying operational efficiency is continuous improvement, better, faster, cheaper. In order to be better, faster, cheaper, you've got to learn. Oper underlying innovation is experimentation and discovery and exploration. You do experiments to learn. Organizations that are able to put together operational excellence and innovation basically are great learning organizations and they have two characteristics, high employee engagement and customer co-creation. We need more innovation. In order to have more innovation, you need to be a great learning company. I've spent many, many years studying high performance organizations. First, the research shows the likelihood a public company will be an outstanding performer for more than four consecutive years. The probability of that happening is less than 8%. High performance is hard. It is, the, it is the exception, not the rule. Now, what are the characteristics of these companies? Well, in today's world, a company needs to basically be agile, be able to move quickly, be able to adapt, be able to constantly 
evaluate and in effect challenge its business model and how it's doing business and to basically experiment. It's what I call how do you be an entrepreneurial big company? How do you have a small company soul and a big company body? And the way companies who are able to achieve this do it, they create an internal aligned system where they basically define what are those behaviors? What types of behaviors, human behaviors, will lead to operational excellence and innovation? And then they create a culture, a measurement system, a reward system, and they're, that basically enable and promote those behaviors and their leaders role model those behaviors. Some of those behaviors are critical inquiry, constructive debate, asking why, challenging assumptions, having the permission to speak freely. Organizations, people inside organizations need the permission to speak freely but respectfully to challenge. Also, great high performance organizations have the permission to fail. You're going to try things and they're going to fail and unfortunately most organizations can't stand failure, they can't tolerate failure. Failure is necessary if you're going to be an agile, changing, adaptive, innovative company. And therefore, you've got to define under what conditions failure occurs, and you've got to limit your investment in experiments to a tolerable loss because you're going to basically engage in lots of failed experiments. Our research shows that you can take a thousand ideas, and out of those, pick the best hundred to try, to do an experiment, a learning launch, we call it, out of that hundred experiments, maybe ten initiatives that you will fund to some extent may produce one new growth curve. So it is a low probability game, and if you will, innovation is a lot like being a good blackjack player or a good gambler. You gotta place a lot of small bets, you gotta learn as you go, you gotta learn when to double down and when to fold. Then, if you can, keep that entrepreneurial small company soul in a large company body.